Oh, yeah. This is for real. So now I'm not messing around. Oh. Not messing around anymore. So when we change the speed that the magnet goes into the solenoid, what we did is we changed the amount of voltage created, so the amount of EMF. So we are changing the EMF. And the reason was faster motion pushes more magnetic field through. So if I have my solenoid, um, if I have it going through quicker, I'm pushing more field through as I insert it into the solenoid. Okay? Perfect. All right. Ladies on the other side in the back. Um, changing the poles. What did changing the poles do? Okay, so it changed the direction. So you had like, with the north, maybe you had like positive 20, and with the south, maybe you had uh, negative 20, or something like that. Okay, so why do you think that is? Why do you think, so this was, so the first one was a change in EMF, this is in a change in direction. So the EMF stay the same. The magnitude stay the same, but the direction changed. So why do you think this is? Why do you think changing the pole changed the direction? Because it goes towards the north pole and away from the or no. It goes towards the south pole and away from the north. So it goes away from the north. So when you push the north pole in, you're pushing field in. But when you have the South Pole, the South Pole has it coming like into it. So when you push the South Pole in, you're pushing field out. So you push field out when you push the South Pole in. You push field in when you push the North Pole in. Okay? So, again, the reason for this is, um, so North pushes field in. But the amount of field it pushes in is the same. South pushes field out. Perfect. All right. Dude's in the right middle. My right middle. Um, inserting or removing a magnet. What did you notice for that one? Don't, don't ever one talk. You can't read your own writing? No, everyone's a little spot. Oh my gosh. Dago, what you got? It kind of just got the same thing, like it just changed the direction. Perfect. So, um, when you insert, uh, this was inserting and removing, right? So, when you insert, uh, you might have gotten, again, like positive 20 millivolts. And when you removed, uh, you might have gotten uh, negative 20 millivolts. Unless you did the other pole, right? Or if you did it on the other side of the solenoid. So yes, there are some reasons that you might have gotten flipped. But you should have noticed that one would be negative and one would be positive. Okay? So this is, again, a change in direction. All right. Uh, Connor or Jack, why do you think that is? Why is it that changing whether you inserted or removed, why did that change the direction? Because it's changing direction. Okay. So you're changing whether you're pushing the field in or pulling the field out, right? When you push the field in, it's positive. When you pull the field out, it's negative. Um, so again, so you push... Field in versus pulling field out. Okay, pushing the field in versus pulling the field out. Okay, so that's a change in direction. All right, number four, moving the magnet over the coil rather than through. All right, dude's in the middle back over here. What'd you guys find? So number four. So, like, 
Um, this one was like if you put the magnet into the center or if you put the magnet like over the top of it. Yep. So the direction is opposite. And you should have found, hopefully, that the numbers were a little different, too. Yes. So you should have found, so through might have been like positive 20, but over, oven, nice, over might have been like negative 10. Because it's not through, it's over. Yep. And I'm going to show you why the direction's different. So let's look at this again. So when I insert the magnet through, notice that all my fields are coming out of the North Pole. And so all of these field lines are going through the uh, coil here. So I've got six field lines, eight if you want to count these two, that are going into the coil. But notice if I move it above. Now, I still have fields going through, but notice they're going backwards. So as I pull it through, I'm actually pulling the field out instead of in. Okay? And notice there's not as many field lines. All these field lines on top, I'm missing. And so you have less field lines that makes the value go down, and you're pulling the field out as opposed to pushing the field in. So the reason why these are different, again, um, when you put it through, you have lots of field going in. And when you go over, you have less field going out. All right, uh, dudes on the side, what'd you guys find for the number of loops? When you change the number of loops, what'd you notice? Good. So less loops had less um, EMF. But the direction was the same, correct? Okay. So uh, this one I forgot to mention. So this one changed direction. And it changed EMF. And this one just changed EMF. OK. Um, Stick with you guys. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that less loops had less EMF? <laughs> Ideas? Why do you think less loops had less EMF? Peyton? Uh, because they're not going to attract as much of a magnetic field because there's not as many of them. Right. So each loop does its own thing, right? So when the field goes through, it goes through all the loops. <laughs> each loop has its own induced EMF. The more loops you have, the more induced EMFs you have overall. So they build on top of each other. So um, each loop generates its own EMF, and they build off one another. Perfect. Okay. So now we've looked at how these things work. Let's look at what's going on with this. So test one shows the effect rate of change has on EMF. So the rate at which I change the magnetic force. That's partly number four too, right? Um, I have less field going through if I go over, so that's also kind of affecting the rate of change a little bit. But more so, we're worried about, um, yeah, the rate of change, like how quickly it happens. So is this directly or is this inversely proportional? 
So describe the effect. Tell me if it's inversely or directly. So first of all, the effect is it changes the EMF. Changes the EMF. And how does it do it? Now, velocity is hard to measure. Like, it's hard to measure the velocity you inserted the magnet in. What is not easy, uh, difficult to measure is time. Now, the weird thing is, when you increase the velocity, you decrease the time. So when we're thinking about time, time is inversely proportional to EMF. The less time it takes to insert the magnet, the more EMF you generate it. So this would be time is inversely proportional. Okay, so I'm going to build an equation for this. I'm going to build an equation for this. Um, so we're going to solve for EMF. And the first thing we know has an effect is time, and it's inversely proportional. If that means it needs to be in the denominator. So I'm going to put that in the denominator. Okay, easy peasy. All right, test two through four. We're all showing the effects. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, they are all showing the effects that magnetic flux uh, change had. Um, so flux is the amount of field. But more so, we are thinking about, in this one, direction. Okay, So when we were just talking about um, flux, what we were looking at, we were mostly looking at changes in direction, right? Um, it was in or it was out, or it was forward or it was back. But we were mostly looking at the change. The one that did have a significant impact on that was this one. So we had fewer field lines going through. And that changed it. So basically, it's going to change the direction, mostly. And it's going to have a little bit of effect on EMF. So the amount of field that goes through, the flux, that is going to change the direction. But it's also going to change... Um, the electromotive force that's created. So how is this related? Well, if we increase the amount of field that went through, we increase the amount of voltage that was induced. So this is directly proportional. Okay. Um, so mag flux. Specifically, it's the change in magnetic flux. So change in magnetic flux uh, is directly proportional. And I apologize, there's not a lot of room here. This is this is the first year I'm doing this lab, so I'm learning as I go. So next year, when you don't have me, it will be much better. Oh. Lucky you guys. Okay, so this needs to go in the equation. It's directly proportional, which means it goes in the numerator. So it's change in magnetic flux. So we write delta, that's how we write change. And then we write magnetic flux, which you guys all know is the symbol capital Phi. Dude, what is <laughs> do that? It's, the, it's the Green Lantern symbol. That'll help, but there we go. Yeah. Joaquin's on board with me. Um, it's the Green Lantern symbol. It's the Greek letter capital Phi, not lowercase Phi. It's not lowercase Phi, it's capital Phi. Okay, get that right. <laughs> Say, there you go. I thought you could at least throw pi in there. <coughs> theta? No, we're not doing theta. No. Theta's angle. All right. So we've got delta phi. But here's the other thing. We also were talking about direction. So um, you guys don't know this, but the direction is really specific and is kind of funky. And it gets its own thing. It gets a negative sign. There's a negative sign in this equation, and that's because of the direction change. Um, in fact, that negative sign is so important, it gets its own law. The negative sign is its own thing. 
So this is called Faraday's law. The negative sign is called Lenz's law. It's its own thing. This one dude figured out the negative sign. He got his own name in physics. I like, seriously, how can I not even get that? Wait, so this, mean, this means to have a negative sign, but you made it on the same one. Uh, I'm going to show you why, because there's something else that goes in here. You should have a unit where a constant is called Borch's name. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. The Borch's, just make it. Just make speak into existence. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do that. Next year, when we do momentum, I'm going to tell the class that the unit is Borch's. Like, I'm not going to remember all those other names from yeah. other classes. Yeah. Just add your name in there Done. I'm with you. Should have asked you sooner, Jack. Speaking of existence. All right. Number five. Mr. B, you should just sneak it in on a test. <laughs> How many borches is this? Yeah. Um, all right. Number five was the number of loops. So first of all, that changed the EMF. And we found that that is directly proportional. So when we increase the number of loops, we increase the amount of EMF. So loops are directly proportional. That means it needs to be in the numerator. And the symbol for that is capital N. It's like the first normal one. Besides time. Oh, by the way, EMF is not the actual symbol. The actual symbol is the uh, uh, capital Greek letter Epsilon, which kind of looks like that. Um, being that is really nasty, um, I'm just going to write EMF. Also, I'm going to make Delta Phi better for you. I'm going to make Delta Phi better. Uh, and so we're going to make it easier. So the actual final equation for Faraday's Law, which you will solve, is going to be much nicer. It's going to be much nicer, I promise. Okay. But this is what I wanted you to get. I wanted to get to this point. I wanted to see, hey, we can figure out what affects this. The number of loops, the change in the magnetic flux, and the time it takes to do that. Those three things, that affects how much voltage is created. You do it faster, you make more voltage. You have more loops, you do more voltage. You get more flux through it, you get more voltage. Those three things affect how much um, current is induced. And this is how power plants work. Power plants have lots of coils of wire. They do it very, very quickly, and they have a huge amount of flux change. You do those three things, and you create bonanza's amount of power. Huh? You can. Um, the way fission and fusion work is they heat up water, which creates steam, which spins a turbine. And the turbine is basically a magnet in a wire. Um, and you spin that magnet really, really fast, and that creates current going through it. Um, biz the whiz, this is uh, uh, alternating current. It's AC that we're talking about, not DC. DC is what batteries are. Uh, AC is what the power outlets are. Okay. Also, your electronics are uh, DC. That's why you have those adapter cables that go between the two. Um, go ahead, put the wires back in the bag. Put the wires back in the bag, put the uh, solenoid and the voltmeter in the box, and give the magnets to me. Bring the magnets up to me. So magnets to me, other things in the box, put the boxes in the uh, bags in the bag. So magnets to me, boxes and baggies in the back. Thanks, sir. Huh? Oh, am I really? <laughs> I, I tell you, the fact that, like, 